All right, welcome back once again to the channel where it's another wrap up video. This time, the month of January. Happy 2022. And first up, we do have my mic is in the way. We've got A Feast for Crows, book four of A Song of Ice and Fire, written by none other than George R.R.R.R. R. 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 Martin. So, this is part of the reread that we are continuing with myself, Jimmy, of the Fantasy Network, and Leanna at Leanna's Library. So this book is fantastic and much better on a reread because I feel like a lot of people didn't love it the first time around because of the the wait time between a so, uh, so, between a storm of swords and this book and then losing a bunch of POVs that you're used to following either through death of a character or just they're not in this book because it focuses on a whole ton of new stuff. But you get to see an entirely different side of the world. You get lots of new character POVs. And the stuff that you do get from the characters that you're used to following is fantastic. You get a ton of Cersei in this book. You get some Arya. You get Jamie all over the place. Great, fantastic arc throughout this entire book. If you want spoiler-filled thoughts, uh, they're all positive for the most part. We also poke some fun at George's uh, sex scenes. <laughs> but that link is down below. That is on Leanna's channel. I unfortunately had to bow out a couple of times and actually leave early just because of kids being awake and sick. But um, we talked for hours and they talked for even longer after I left. So tons of spoiler filled thoughts there. Fantastic book. No, I don't think it's on the level of A Storm of Swords, but every book in A Song of Ice and Fire is fantastic in my opinion. They're all just various levels of fantastic. So I mean, it, you learn a ton about the Iron Islands. You learn a ton about Essos and Dorne, and just, this book's great. It's just very hard to top what happened in A Storm of Swords when that was every epic moment that you've seen for, I mean, you could fit an entire series worth of epic stuff into that book. That's why this book probably gets lower on people's, people's tier list, but it's fantastic. Next up, we have Sword of Destiny. So not technically even book one yet of the Witcher series, that's Blood of Elves, which I am going to read in the month of February, but Sword of Destiny is the second, uh, co you know, collection of short stories, and these are just so hit or miss for me. Um, I didn't even like this as much as Last Wish, honestly. They're, the first story is very weak. I think the second one was pretty good. Whatever the one with the, the like, the take on the Little Mermaid, <laughs> I, I kind of hated that one. And just, I, I am, I've been told that the last two stories in this is more of what you should expect from the main series and that's kind of a red flag for me because I don't know if it's just the translation or it's just what's being written here I just I don't love it so I'm going to try out Blood of Elves and see how I feel but in general um it, it's it's interesting that the first two collections of short stories focus so much on Geralt and he's much less of a focus in the main storyline because it's series storyline essentially and I just there's there's really wonky uh, dialogue throughout these books it seems there's a weird amount of like random sexism and like childish male behavior towards oh my god boobs like it's there's there's some choices being made in, in these books that I mean it doesn't bother me but I'm just like why is this here it doesn't do anything for the story some of it's just bad <laughs> honestly and then there's some short stories that are great so I don't know. I, I really enjoy the show. I like the games. I know they take place after the stories of the books. I'm going to give Blood of Elves a shot and see what the main meat of the story is. And if I hate that book, I'll just stop. If I enjoy it, I will continue. I think most people have told me the Baptism of Fire is pretty good in the main series. So I'm going to try to get to that and see how I feel. But these short stories, man, they're so up and down for me. And a lot of people have told me that this is the best of the series, and if that's the case, yikes. Next up, though, is a book that I very much enjoyed and have no idea what the hell I was reading half the time. That's Drawing of the Three by Stephen King, so book two of The Dark Tower. As I continue my journey through the series, this is so different from Gunslinger. I don't know if the revised version of Gunslinger is any more like this book, but I did not expect what was in this book. There's without spoiling anything just the the time aspects and dealing with different time periods and characters from those time periods and the wild amount of racist dialogue in this book 
Uh, I guess that's kind of par for the course for Stephen King because he he likes to write sort of caricatures of really racist people. And I mean, it was in Salem's Lot too, which kind of makes sense when you're middle of nowhere, you know, uh, America in whatever that time period was. You're in like a small town. There's a lot of people that are familiar with each other and then unfamiliar with others. And that's where some of that comes out. I get it. I have family from very hick <laughs> bodunk country town in Virginia. I understand where that comes from. I didn't expect to get that much of it in the Dark Tower. Uh, I don't know if that continues or if that was really just the focus on the drawing of the three. But some of the characters in this, like I, I was, I was just like, what is happening? This is, this is crazy. Uh, amongst that, though, I mean, you also you've got like talking crabs that are eating people. You've got opening doors into other realities or like parallel dimensions. Uh, there's so much craziness happening. I still don't know what the Dark Tower is. I don't know why the gunslingers are a thing. I'm so interested in. I don't want to spoil what happened in this book, so I'm not going to go into any more detail, but it was one of the weirdest things that I've read in years. Uh, I literally have nothing to compare this series to so far. Uh, it's 100% unique from anything else that I've read, even if you try to pull some of the like hero's journey or like kind of what I talked about in The Gunslinger. This, I, if you ask me, like, what is this book similar to? I'd be like... Uh, nothing <laughs> i don't know your dmt trip that you might have taken last week like there's just wild wild imagination happening here and i'm really intrigued and i want to continue uh yeah there's there's some things that people aren't going to like and i totally understand if they want to put the books down because of it but i i feel like i understand what he was doing uh shining a light on how bad some of these uh like mentalities can be and how like toxic it is but it's just uh the the main like chasing down to the chasing down the dark tower and figuring out what the hell this series is even going to be cuz the usually two books into a series you kind of know where it's going i i have no idea and i'll be reading the wasteland soon because i don't know what's coming next one last thing what i do love about stephen king though so far now have having read 3 of his books is his attention to detail in uh crafting characters and even even like these crazy people that he does it really well because everybody i think ha at one point in your life whether it's a family member or friend or just somebody that you met on the street has run into people that you encounter in stephen king books and it really just shows you like the the bad part of humanity at times um and he just he he writes really compelling believable characters and you can tell that even the dark tower like there is a obviously a plot that's unfolding right there's this overarching you know big epic fantasy thing that's going to be happening but it's so heavily focused on the characters and their dynamics with each other and their conversations and like their personal struggles and he just does that incredibly incredibly well so props to him for that uh some of the characters that you meet in this are just you really feel for them at times and they i don't they're just very believable people and and i like that and then, of course, I mostly did these on audio. I have reviews up on the channel, finally. These were a reread because I wanted to reread them to actually do my reviews for them because I didn't want to. It had been so many months that I felt like I couldn't do it justice to actually review it properly. So Peace Talks and Battleground, book 16 and 17 of the Dresden Files. What can I say other than these are fantastic? The reviews are linked down below if you want full spoiler filled thoughts on both of these books. But man, just the, the wait for the next book is excruciating and joining that that group of dresden readers that is just waiting for it to happen i need some more dresden and it now i'm sad because it's going to be years and years and years probably decades before this whole thing actually wraps up um but i mean we have tons of time between now and then to get new good dresden books and reread the series which i i'm kind of itching to do as i mentioned in some of these reviews getting up to battleground like i really want to go back and see all the foreshadowing and the slow buildup of things that I didn't see the first time around because I didn't know where it was going and just watching the evolution of his writing and his characters and this world from what was this small detective fantasy novel in book one to this epic battleground book 17 where you have literal gods fighting wizards and vampires and werewolves and all these fantastical creatures coming together coming to a head in this massive you know fight for the world essentially it's just it's so good 
the the character work is fantastic the relationships are great the dialogue is top notch super funny witty i just i love everything about jim butcher's writing he's one of my favorite authors you know full stop i i just i absolutely adore this series if i had to make like a top 10 characters list there would be several from the dresden files and man i just usually like writers can't even make me cry or tear up at times damn it jim knows how to do this with with kids in these books and with really impactful emotional sad moments and just heart-wrenching dialogue he he crushes it with this series and if you're not reading the dresden files you should be again if you want my spoiler filled thoughts i do have reviews on the channel for those i i just i can't wait to continue and if you're not an audiobook person or you are so if you are an audiobook person, James Marsters is one of the best. If you're not an audiobook person, James Marsters is one of the best. You should give it a try. Uh, I was not a huge audiobook person until The Dresden Files. And I finally, I think after book two or three, jumped on the audiobook train. They are so good. His voice for Harry Dresden, his he he's one of those actors, because he's an actor, not just a voice narrator. He goes for it, man. He sells you on some of these characters, whether it's a little you know, fairy imp toot toot, or if it's Harry, or if it's, you know, the, f the fairy queen, or if it's Thomas, like he goes for these voices and knocks it out of the park, really makes it a fun experience. And they're just, that that's one of the, one of the things that I love so much about the Dresden Files is I have fun. Like so many f fantasy books that I read, they're good. And they're really, really engaging and interesting, but they're not fun. I don't walk away from it laughing or smiling or finishing a book and like, damn, that was just a good time. Like even books that I love, they're not necessarily fun to, in the way that the Dresden Files are. And that's why I love them. They're just, they are fun to read. I have a great time with them. So that's what I read in January. Uh, I know on my Goodreads, I think Gunslinger technically finished January 1st, but that's a December read that reviews on the channel. But that's my January. Next up, I will be doing my February TBR, which I'm still deciding because now I'm in that moment where I'm trying to decide month to month. I'm like, what do I even read? Like, who knows? Uh, there's probably going to be some Dresden coming up soon too, again. And I kind of want to get back to Malazan because I've been itching to continue that. And real, real quick side tangent, can you guys just make the same damn size books? Because where is it? Where is it? Eeny, miny, moe, it's hiding. I don't like mass markets, and Malazan books are too big for mass markets. The hardcovers are like $80 a piece because they're not in print anymore. The trade paperbacks are anywhere from $20 to $80 a piece. It's crazy, but I'm going to buy one at a time as I read through the series. I like big floppy trade paperbacks. Why the fuck are they not the same size? Tor, you publish both of these. Why is... Dead House Gate, slightly shorter. That makes no sense. What in the world are you doing? Why is there no consistency? You didn't even do the covers the same. There's no Malazan logo at the top on this one. Fine. 